Hello everyone, I am Prem Zadav. I am from Pimpri Chinchwad College of Engineering. Today, my topic in this conference for presentation is image-based plant disease detection and classification using deep convolutional neural network, that is CNN. My co-authors are Dr. Roshni Rao and Abha Bodas. The outline of this presentation is, first we start with introduction, then is a literature survey, then proposed methodology, result analysis, conclusion, future scope, and finally, the references. Introduction Agriculture is the backbone of our country. Almost all the industries rely on agricultural raw materials. Agriculture is the lifeblood of all nations. The GDP, economy, and progress of each country are all dependent on agricultural expansion. In India, agriculture is the most common occupation. India is the leading producer of pulses, milk, jute, rice, and cotton. India can now meet the demands of its people while also exporting to the rest of the world. In 2019, India had a trade surplus of $8.25 billion in agriculture and forestry commodities. According to the report, farmers would need to produce 70% more food as the population grows from 7 million to 9 million by 2050. We can attain this figure by improving agricultural operations. Many farmers desire to adopt modern agricultural technologies, but many are unable to do this for a variety of reasons, including lack of knowledge about technology, excessive technology cost, and so on. Each year, it is estimated that 30 to 40% of crops are lost as a result of production chain. Plant disease prevention is linked to issues of sustainable agriculture and climate change. According to Georgia Research, approximately $701.2 million in plant disease losses were estimated in 2010, including the control expenses. The estimated crop cost was $4,236.51 billion, with a disease loss of 16.5% across all the crops affected. The annual estimated losses in India due to nematodes are estimated to be Rs. 242.1 billion. However, most illness manifest in some form of visual view. The primary method for identifying plant disease in practice is a qualified expert's naked eye examination. But many machine learning techniques have proven to be effective in wide range of image processing applications in recent years. Artificial intelligence based learning has yielded positive results. Machine learning algorithms train the system to learn autonomously and improve results based on its own. Support vector machines, artificial neural networks, random forest, k-means method, fuzzy logic, convolutional neural networks are examples of traditional methods. Design. There are many systems which have been designed for this and our system has achieved an accuracy of more than 92% of more than 90%. So let's move on to the next topic. Literature survey. We reviewed many published studies on image processing, CNN, supervised and unsupervised learning that might assist us to understand how leaf diseases are classified based on their images. Based on this, we have presented the literature survey of top 5 papers that helped us the most. The title of the first paper is Deep Neural Networks Based Recognition on Plant Diseases by Leaf Image Classification. The second paper is Plant Leaf Disease Detection and Classification Based on CNN and LVQ algorithm. The third paper is deep learning model for the plant disease detection and diagnosis. The fourth paper is maize leaf disease detection and classification using machine learning algorithms. And the fifth paper was published by JPR Engineering College and Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineering. Proposed methodology. We would like to start with system architecture. First step is RGB image. Normal image is converted into red, green, black, that is RGB image of dimensions 128 into 128 into 3. Pooling layer. Pooling is used for reducing the dimensionality of input by a constant factor. It, its aim is to reduce computational load while performing feature selection. Max pooling is widely used because it introduces least amount of translation and distortion invariance, resulting in faster convergence and better generalization. So this is the diagram of our system architecture. So first we have a RGB image of dimensions 128 into 128 into 3. Then first we have used max pool of size 3 into 3 and used stride equal to 2. Then we have used 32 filters padding equal to 0 and stride 1. So we get a image of the dimension 63 into 63 into 32. Remember we use max pool to reduce the dimensionality of the given image so in the next step we have used everything the same just we have used 64 filters so we get 30 into 30 into 64 dimensioned image 
now again we have used the same things as the previous one and we get 14 into 14 into 64 dimension inch now we keep everything the same just use 96 filters to get 6 into 6 into 96 dimension image now we use everything the same and change the number of filters to 64 and get a final image of 2 into 2 into 64 dimension image and now the, it, we get a fully connected network which then is mapped to a softmax network which divides which classifies everything into 38 different classes fully connected layer the input vector is linearly combined with the mate matrix the network either flips between convolutional and max pooling layers resulting in a 1d feature vector or the images are rearranged into a 1d shape with the same number of neurons as the classes in the classification task the output layer is always fully connected the softmax activation function is used to normalize the results resulting in approximated posterior class probabilities in all the layers we have used are of size 3 into 3 padding equal to 0 and stride equal to 1 in pooling layers we have used pooling type as max pooling and every time the stride use is 2 and the size is 3 into 3 in the first layer we have used 32 filters in the second layer we have used 64 in the fourth in the third layer we have used 64 and in the fourth we have used 96 and finally we have used 64 layers again then there is a fully connected network having 256 neuron and then finally we have used softmax activating technique having 38 values as the total number of classes in our data set that is 38 then now our data set description the data set is our model is divided into three parts training data set validation data set and test data set our training data set has 70,295 images belonging to 38 classes. The validation data set has 17,572 images belonging to 38 classes. And the test data set has only 33 images. Results. The tests are done on healthy and disease sleep database in order to classify them into appropriate categories such as potato late bright, potato early bright, potato healthy, soybean healthy and raspberry healthy and etc. And there are so many 38 different types. The first image shows a diseased apple leaf and the second image shows an healthy apple leaf. This is visible to naked eye but our system also identifies them correctly using CNN. The CNN model was trained on a large data set containing about 70,000 images. On fine tuning the parameters, an overall accuracy of 94.56% was achieved by the model. The formula of accuracy used was number of correct outcomes divided by total number of outcomes. To fine tune the parameters and identify the correct value of parameters, we have plotted different graphs to see what are what how the accuracy changes according to these parameters so first we have plotted accuracy versus number of epochs accuracy versus number of layers accuracy versus number of filters so let's go there so first we have plotted accuracy versus number of epochs on comparing the number of epochs and accuracy initially the accuracy was very less that was 16.6 percent after the first epoch but it gradually increased as the number of epochs increased initially there was an exponential rise but after 90 epochs the accuracy increased rate was very steady so we have chosen 150 epochs for our system this gave best accuracy because if we use more than 150 epochs the model would overfit, overfit to the training data and didn't perform well on testing data now the second is accuracy versus the number of layers as you can see from the graph that the model having four layers has accuracy more than the model having five layers but in our model practically we have used the model having five layers because the model which has four layers uh, overfits the training data and does not perform on the test data now the third one accuracy versus number of filters as shown in the graph you can see accuracy is achieved more when 64 filters is used in the last layer of the models when the number of filter is 32 the accuracy is quite good that is 93.63 percent but when we use 64 filters we get 94.56 percent which is one percent more than the data and it fits perfectly to the data that it does not cause any overfitting so 64 filters are chosen as final value to be taken in the last layer now the fourth one is training accuracy and training loss you can clearly see that as the number of epochs increases the accuracy increases in the first graph and as the number of epochs increases the training loss decreases in the second graph so now the conclusion so from this we learned 
different methods and approaches and algorithms used in various papers for classification and detection of plant disease. Leaf disease detection is an important step to combat diseases and improve crop yield. Developed and tested an image processing based technique for detecting leaf diseases. We put our system to test on variety of diseases that affect plants. Neural network classifier based on statistical classification performs well and can accurately detect and categorize this disease with a precision of 94.56%. Future scope. Developing better segmentation techniques, choosing better feature extraction algorithms and culling classification algorithms we can use to make a more accurate model which can be finally deployed and used by all the farmers at an affordable rate. Following are the references that we have used in our paper. Thank you everyone for giving us an opportunity to present paper in this prestigious conference and thank you for hearing us patiently throughout the presentation.